Hi guys, this is Nada from Tech Testers. A few days ago, we posted a video about the brand new monitor from Aorus, the 8027QD. Um, it's actually a very cool video, so I'm gonna leave a link down below if you wanna check it out. And a lot of questions came actually about how the FreeSync experience is now that NVIDIA is supporting the uh, VESA Adaptive Sync, aka FreeSync monitors. So in this video, we're going to first explain what the Adaptive Sync is, uh, we're gonna tell you how to enable it on your NVIDIA graphics card, and we're gonna share our first experiences with that. Let's start with a bit of background for those of you that don't know what's going on here. Uh, both the uh, VESA Adaptive Sync, uh, NVIDIA G Sync, as well as the AMD Free Sync rely on a similar trick, and that is uh, matching the refresh rate of your monitor to the frame rate of the game that you are playing. The result of that is a way smoother gaming experience, especially if you have lower FPS. So if you're playing, for example, between 30 and 60 FPS, the result in smoothness is going to be huge. It also prevents uh, screen tearing. Now, some people are very sensitive to screen tearing, some people don't notice it at all or are not bothered by it, but having a variable refresh rate is objectively a good thing while gaming. Even though the result was similar at the end, the implementation of this technology was much different. Um, NVIDIA insisted that their technology is way superior and they had great requirements for the G-Sync monitors as well as great control. On the other hand, AMD had a much looser approach. Most monitors can use their FreeSync technology with little to no control. Now, what was the result of that? If you buy a G-Sync monitor, you are granted a great G-Sync experience. When it comes to FreeSync monitors, uh, some monitors would just say they're FreeSync, but the frequency of where the uh, FreeSync is possible would be so little that you could pretty much call it useless. However, G-Sync monitors were expensive, usually costing about $150 more than their FreeSync counterparts. And even though plenty of FreeSync monitors offer truly poor sync implementation, there was a ton of awesome FreeSync monitors that offer an equally great experience in every possible way. Now, if you bought something like a GTX 1060, which is pretty much the most sold graphics card out there, the chances are you're not gonna have enough budget to buy a G-Sync monitor. But if you go for the RX 580, which is the AMD counterpart, the chances are that you're gonna have a monitor, a FreeSync monitor that's gonna fit your budget just fine. And this gave uh, AMD a great competitive advantage in this price segment. So, NVIDIA finally gave in a bit and with their latest driver update enabled you to use FreeSync functionality on your NVIDIA GPU. Of course, this had to be done with a bit of NVIDIA's RG Sync is still so much better sauce by first saying they tested 400 monitors but only 12 were good enough to be branded G-Sync compatible, implying the other 388 weren't. If you own one of these 12 listed units, NVIDIA will consider you cool and G-Sync will be enabled by default and you're done. The most interesting part, actually the whole point of this video, is that now with the latest NVIDIA patch, you can enable this functionality on any FreeSync or Adaptive Sync monitor if you have a 10 or 20 series NVIDIA graphics card and your monitor needs to be connected via DisplayPort. How do you enable it for your setup? Well, it is pretty easy. First, some screens require FreeSync or Adaptive Sync settings to be enabled within the on-screen display on the monitor. Then go to nvidia.com slash drivers and download the latest driver for your system. After installing, right-click your desktop, open NVIDIA control panel, go to the G-Sync tab. If you don't see it, make sure FreeSync is enabled in your monitor settings. There you decide if you want G-Sync for full-screen apps only or windowed apps as well. Select the display you want to enable it for and simply check the last box to enable G-Sync. That's it. One other setting that is worth keeping an eye on can be found in Control Panel as well. So go to Manage 3D Settings and look for the Vertical Sync feature. If you set this to On, you simply leave any sync option within all your games to Off and the driver will handle the rest. If you experience problems in certain games, which is possible this early on, you can instead let each game decide itself if sync should be enabled or disabled. Obviously, we can't show this in a video as the camera won't capture the speed of the displays properly, but so far, the experience we had with G-Sync on the Gigabyte Aorus AD27QD as well as the ISO FS2735 has been spot on. Smooth, 
no tearing and it just feels fast. We haven't been able to see any issues of any kind with these monitors playing through a couple of games and even with the Aorus monitor set to HDR, something that technically isn't supposed to be supported at all, seems to work fine both in Far Cry 5 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Nvidia does say that screens not confirmed compatible by them might experience issues like flickering or artifacts. Of course, testing a couple of monitors here will not be the complete story on this topic. I'm sure they're right that some screens won't work well, especially if the variable refresh rate is poor or on older models. So there is definitely a lot of testing left to do, but again, based on what we've seen so far, it seems more likely that you have a good experience than a bad one. At least a lot more likely than Nvidia is making it seem. So that's actually really big news, especially for those of you guys that own a decent FreeSync monitor. And even though the experiences still might vary, I do expect them to get better if Nvidia pushes a few more updates. Now, some may think that this is Nvidia admitting defeat, but I think it's a very smart move and they're pushing and putting so much pressure on their only competitor. For now, AMD was relying on FreeSync as a unique selling point and they were dominating that affordable market, but now Nvidia just came in and took it away from them. Does that mean G-Sync is dead? Not at all. Let's not forget that there is more to a high-end gaming experience than simply matching the refresh rate of your screen. So it wasn't surprising that with this announcement, Nvidia also announced updates to G-Sync, like G-Sync Ultimate for the real high-end rigs, making sure there are plenty of reasons why G-Sync will get a lot of love for the best of systems. But for those of you not looking to buy an expensive G-Sync monitor, this really is a huge step forward. One last tip. If you have a FreeSync monitor with a limited range and are feeling adventurous, take a look at Custom Resolution Utility, CRU, a free tool that allows you to manually adjust the variable refresh rate of your monitor easily. Of course, this is not officially supported by monitors and you do this at your own risk. However, plenty of monitors prove their FreeSync ranges can be expanded significantly and safely. We'll just put the link in the description below. So this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments what do you think about videos like this? Were they informative enough or if there's something else that would you like us to cover? Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye!